to everyone. Welcome to LICD Lecture 38A. This topic is OPAM non-idealities and specifically we will study the effect of DC offset voltage on OPAM integrator circuit. Okay, so let's start with a revision of uh, OPAM non-idealities. So the first non-ideality was finite gain. Next was DC offset. Next input bias current and finite speed. And in the last online lecture, we have explicitly gone through the DC offset, its effects, its origin, and its incorporation with the OPAM. And uh, yeah, that's it. So we have seen about input offset voltage and its effects on the output. It produces a DC error at the output, basically. So now let's study the effect of DC offset on OPAM integrator circuit. Okay, so here we have OPAM integrator with a capacitor C1 and a resistor R1 and we apply to the inverting terminal and uh, we have just incorporated uh, input offset voltage VIO uh, between the non-inverting terminal and ground. Okay, so next we need to know what the circuit does in presence of this DC offset voltage. Okay, so let us set V in equal to zero and analyze the circuit just with an DC offset voltage. Okay, so we also assume that your VIO, that is your DC offset voltage, is a constant voltage. Now this is an assumption, right? Now you will refer the circuit which is given uh, on the on the right hand side. We'll refer that explicitly for our derivation. So due to negative feedback and high open loop gain, we can have, uh, you know. From the diagram, we can say that V plus is equal to VIO from the circuit. Also, by virtual sort concept, we can say that V plus is equal to V minus is equal to VIO. Okay. Now, uh, since we are finding the output expression in absence of input, that is V in is equal to zero, we are assuming that the capacitor is having no charge initially. That is, uh, V C1 at t equal to zero is zero, okay? Now, setting these things aside and uh, putting the assumptions forward, uh, let's find the expression, expression for the output voltage as a function of time, okay? So from this circuit, uh, we have V plus is equal to V minus is equal to VIO. Okay, this we have already established earlier, okay? Let's go to the earlier point. Okay, fine. So let's apply KCL at V plus node. What do we get if we apply KCL at uh, V plus nodes? We get uh, if sum of incoming currents is equal to sum of outgoing currents. Incoming current is IC1 and outgoing currents are IR1 and I uh, plus I minus. Okay, and here I minus is the current going into the inverting terminal. We assume it to be very, very small. Fine. And uh, from this circuit, we can also write uh, IR1 is equal to V plus upon R1. Basically, what happens is V in is zero. So R1 register, other end terminal is grounded. So IR1 will be straightforward. V plus, uh, actually, it should be V minus. So I must have made an error. IR1 will be V minus upon R1, which will be equal to V minus is equal to V plus, right? So it will be. VIO upon R1, okay? And uh, also, if we see from equation number two, I mean, from the point number two, that I minus is very, very small. Hence, we can assume IR1 is equal to IC1 is equal to VIO upon R1, okay? Now, from the circuit, what we can write VC1? So, VC1 will be given by V out minus V minus. I think here also, not getting reflected, V minus it actually. Okay, so there are in two places over here and over here, it should be V minus instead of V. Please take care of it. Yeah. So V V minus is equal to VIO, right? So we we'll substitute it over here. So we'll get V out minus VIO is equal to VC1. Now we know that the current flowing through capacitor is given by the formula C dV by dt, correct? So what will be the capacitor volt, uh, voltage across the capacitor C1? 1 upon C1 integral of IC dt. Okay, so we'll exactly apply this formula. So the 
the voltage across the capacitor is given by 1 upon C1. IC1 dt. And IC1 dt from uh, step number 4, we can substitute the value VIO upon R1 upon dt. Now we know that VIO and R1 are constant. So output voltage will be VIO plus VIO upon R1 C1 into T. Okay, so that means output is a function of time. So this is my output of OPAM integrator with V in equal to C and with only DC offset voltage VIO. Now, if I want to plot, if I want to plot a graph of V out versus time, okay, at time equal to zero, my output will be VIO, correct? So I will already have a DC error. And as my time progresses, uh, this V out will keep on rising. So this is represented by this, uh, this flow is represented as follows. Okay, so I think, I guess you can see this diagram over here on the right hand side. Over here, uh, from if you compare this point number eight, whenever T is equal to zero, my output is VIO. And then with increasing in time, increase in time the v out slightly increases now how high the v out will go so v out eventually if it keeps on increasing it will soon reach opam saturation that means v out will be equal to plus v sat okay so it starts from vio and it linearly increases and increases until it reaches the saturation voltage of the opam okay so this is the uh, graph of v out versus t even without V in is zero. That means my OPAM is driven into saturation even without applying any input. That's a very bad integration operator. Okay, because the integrator should operate whenever the input is being applied to it. So that means the integrator has integrated the DC offset voltage of the OPAM and then uh, it saturated it. Okay, integrator has integrated the DC offset of the OPAM and then it goes into saturation. So that means what? Uh, there is a you know slight blue color statements written over here. Let's, let's read that out. Any amount of DC offset voltage that is, that let's say VIO is 1 millivolt, 0.1, 6 millivolt. It's not always 6, right? It's given in the data set. It doesn't matter whatever the value is. Since the integrator will start working even with very small DC offset voltage. As the output voltage increases linearly at first, then it goes into saturation. That's the meaning of it. It drives the op-amp into saturation. So in summary, the, the circuit allows the offset voltage to be integrated indefinitely with time. And this will make the circuit go into saturation due to DC offset voltage VIO. Somehow we need to fix this problem of OPAM saturation. So what we do is, okay, I think this circuit is visible. So we add a register R2 in series in parallel with capacitor C1, and we claim that by adding so, my circuit, uh, you know, won't be saturated. This is the minor modification which we have done. So, okay, let slightly. Okay, so point number 13 is the minor modification in the circuit of OPAM integrator is addition of R2 register in parallel with C1. Okay, and we claim that R2 does not allow offset voltage to be integrated. So the OPAM will be saved from going into saturation. So let's explore how this is possible. So let's consider the scenario that V in is equal to 0 and because of VIO, current starts going into register R1. That is, IR1 doesn't actually have to flow to capacitor C1. It will prefer the least resistance part. And R2 can provide the least And uh, so output definitely will have a constant error in it. But that error doesn't have that power to drive the But so in presence of an offset, that is VIO, IR1 to flow through R2 and not C1. And if we wait long enough, that is if all the transients die out, any due to VIO, 
so what will happen is the circuit will reach the steady state and after the all the transients are died out capacitor will behave as a open circuit because uh, we see that the capacitor will block the right so at very low frequency or for dc f equal to 0 the reactance offered by the capacitor is infinity and it will behave as a open circuit so let's say for very slowly changing signals or for dc signals uh, if vio is present at the non inverting terminal and the capacitor receiver is open the circuit this circuit behaves as a simple non inverting amplifier right so now your current ir1 will flow through r2 easily without any problem because if capacitor c1 is open circuited that means its impedance is tremendously high so the current will not prefer that part correct and uh, so output expression will be given by v out is equal to 1 plus r2 upon r1 into bio so this is the constant dc error you 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 if you can analyze it carefully you can no time term over here as earlier earlier in the expression we have a term t and t that as the time progresses the output will increase but in this case once we have added this r2 in parallel with c1 what has happened is my output expression indeed it will be like without any input still you are getting the output but that output will be few millivolts because the formula is given by 1 plus r2 upon r1 into vio and vio itself is in millivolts right but this will be a constant dc voltage error present at the output even with v in equal to 0 for a op amp integrator even with this uh, modification right and uh, and so yes we do have some constant error at the output even with v in equal to 0 so this 1 plus r2 upon r1 into vio this much dc error voltage is sitting at the output riding at top of anything that is coming to the circuit to the input okay so uh, without even applying the input without even applying the giving the input the output is uh, having some small dc value which is given by the formula 1 plus r2 upon r1 into vio okay i guess uh, i have covered the topic of effect of uh, dc offset voltage on the op amp integrator and we have discussed a minor modification over the circuit also so i think that's it for uh, today's uh, topic and uh, next time we will begin with the bias current effects on the op amp so until then have a good day and thank you